Hi, everyone. I'm Logan Baldwin, the executive director of Climate Film. And with me, I have Cosmo Spada, the writer and director of Scare Support. Cosmo, why don't you tell us a little bit about your filmmaking background? Yeah, so I've been uh, making films in and around Portland, Oregon, uh, ever since I was in high school. I went to college for film, got a bachelor's in film production. And uh, I really enjoy films that take place in one location. And Scare Support uh, is that. This is my introduction to Mailer Damon, but I know you've used him before in other shorts. Would you give a little background on the character? Yeah, so the Mailer Damon is the manifestation of an automated email reply bot. If you've ever sent an email to the wrong address, you might have gotten an automated response saying the email doesn't exist. And the Mailer Damon in Scare Support is a mailman with a mailbox for a head. And they're kind of a fish out of water. It's their first time in the scare support group. And they're learning about what makes them a unique monster. And everyone in the scare support group is there to dig deep into their inner monster, accept their fears, and then they can then instill fear in others. Fantastic. What inspired you to want to explore the idea of the monsters in a support group? Yeah, so this film originally came to me when I was attending a acting class in Portland called the PDX Actors Lab. And when I was there, I met a bunch of cool local local actors, and they really encouraged us to bring our own material to class, workshop it. And so I originally wrote this script for everyone in that class to kind of uh, rehearse, work through, and I actually casted some of the, several of those actors from that class into this film. And so it was just kind of an exercise of creating unique characters with unique voices. Very cool. Very cool. Um, you said that you have a preference for stories written in one location. What strategies do you like to maintain or do you like to use for maintaining pacing and tension throughout the film uh, while being confined to a single location? Yeah, so generally when I'm writing story beats for a script that's in one location, I always try and make sure that if there's specific scenes um, that they all try and propel the story forward. We're not spending too much time talking about one thing. And um, in Scare Sport, uh, you're introduced to six uh, really cool characters, uh, five of which are monsters. And uh, every scene, I'm trying to give you a little tidbit on their backstory and what makes them tick. Yeah, I you mentioned before that this was intended to be a pilot. Can, you want to talk more about that? Yeah, so I made this in an attempt to pitch to make a web series for Scare Support. I actually uh, have written four other episodes with a writer's room, and uh, we're trying to make a season of five episodes total, including the pilot. And each one uh, focuses on one of the monsters in the support group. Fantastic. Well, I can't wait to see where that goes. Is is it all, do they all take place in that room in, in the uh, support group, all the episodes? Each episode will have a scene in, in the room. Oh. Uh, we'll be venturing outside and seeing more of what the world has. We get to see other uh, other monsters outside of the group. Uh, it's going to yeah. be a fun time. Fantastic. I can't wait to see more of that. I absolutely can't. Um, I really enjoyed the costume design for Scare Support. I, I thought it uh, really balanced the idea that, yes, they're monsters, but there, there's also this comedical, uh, comedic and whimsical tone. Uh, how did you collaborate with the costume designer to ensure that each character's attire not only fit their personality, but also the overall mood of Scare Support? Yeah, so uh, on this film, I worked on three, or I worked with three uh, Portland based costume designers, Casey Hastings, Lauren Johnson, and Bryce Baxter. And they all kind of took two characters and went and made the costume for them. And the goal for each was I wanted to create a unique silhouette. So like, if you just saw like their shadow of the character, you could instantly recognize them. They're, they're iconic. And they really, um, without even saying any line of dialogue, you can tell who they are based on their stature and their shape. I think you absolutely accomplished that. They they all do. And I've heard that that's something that you really want to do with um, animated characters yes. also. 
I've, I've always heard that. Like, who's that Pokemon, you know? Obviously, right. you know who that Pokemon's going to be because you watched the episode. But you, even if you're a casual fan, you can, you can tell what Pokemon that is based on their unique silhouette. They are that um, interesting and creative. And so I, I like that about um, the costume design for Scare Support. I really do. I also really um, enjoyed the uh, color palette. I noticed lots of lots of oranges and blues and yellows, and and I just thought that was really nice um, for a lot of the the, the different costumes. Um, it showed yeah, actually. Me... Uh, Go on. Uh, I actually uh, reference a lot of animation. Um, when making scare support so i was really kind of trying to make like a live action cartoon i guess you could say yeah you you do you like uh animation do you have uh in a background in animation at all yeah Hold actually for it. yeah i have a deep love for animation uh, before filmmaking uh, i studied a lot uh, with drawing and wanted to be a cartoonist actually uh, gr growing up i would make my own comic books and so Making film is kind of like a, an extension of that. You said you made comic books. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Can you can you tell us anything about that? Do you have <laughs> do you have a favorite that you that you made when you were growing up? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, growing up, I actually get got to write some comics uh, for my like elementary school newspaper, and I would have all these characters that would appear. And then uh, later on, I would like make these comic books that were like just a bunch of folded pieces of paper to sh distribute them on the playground. And uh, those were about a, a super powered piece of toast called Toast Man. And so a normal hu humanoid with toaster on his head instead of a, uh, yeah, okay, actually wow. a human sized piece of toast. Oh, OK, OK. Good deal. I like that. I like that. Well, uh we're about out of time here. Uh, do you have any final words before we sign off? Yeah, I just uh, I guess encourage everyone to uh, dig deep, speak to your inner monster, and accept your own fears so you can then instill fear in others. Fantastic. I love to hear it, man. I love to hear it. Well, thank you, Cosmos Theta, for submitting your film to the Klamath Independent Film Festival. Uh, scare support will be available on Eventive for a limited time as part of our showcase. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.